let's look ahead. Wednesday, there are eight games on in the NBA. Let's have a look at the guys that we can stream in, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and did you know that a quarter also means a fourth? I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code LOCKEDONNBA. For $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. So go ahead and double bang and subscribe and notify the bell and leave your comments and all of that great stuff. And on uh, YouTube, uh, you do that. And on audio, you listen, then you double bang and switcheroo. I think we know how that goes. We're talking Wednesday. Now, it's a little bit hard to do this Wednesday show the way I like to do it. I could do this show like, you know, three hours before the games tip off. But A, the show then has no, like, lead time. You can't actually listen to it. Um, and would mean me waking up at four in the morning, which I'm at this point I'm not ready to do. But also, I like to give you a little bit of advance notice because a lot of leagues, and more should, be running fab where you have to make those decisions um, you know, the night after the games. And we can sort of do that and adjust. There's always going to be random things that happen uh, to change things over. But with this particular day... I can't do the usual thing that I would do, and that is go through all eight games and tell you, you know, what we're watching for and who we're streaming in because out of the 16 teams that play on Wednesday, 14 of them play on Tuesday. And those games on Tuesday have not occurred yet. And there is going to be so much stuff that changes and goes on. So there's no point me saying, well, yep, yeah, look, here we go with the Grizzlies and let's see what happens on Tuesday and go through and talk about Wednesday. Like, I, I, I can, There's no point in me doing the usual schedule. The, there are two teams that don't play Tuesday, that do play Wednesday. So we'll talk about them, and then we'll go through some streaming options with a bunch of assumptions that I have made to try and figure out who may play, who may not play, but like guys can get hurt on Tuesday. There's just a bunch of different things that can happen. Yeah? (laughs) I uh, I hope that helps. So let's talk about what's on my radar for the two teams that don't play. That's Cleveland and it's Brooklyn. What we know for the Cavs is that um, Donovan Mitchell returns Dean Wade remains out. Dean Wade left the team for the birth of his kid, came back, and hasn't played since with knee soreness. Don't know what happened to him, but hurt his knee. Anyway, so he's out. For the Nets, these guys, Nick Claxton, Dorian Finney-Smith, Dennis Smith, and Cam Johnson all missed the last game. In fact, Cam Johnson missed the last two. So he missed both games of the back-to-back across the weekend, which... Yeah, seemed a little weird to me, so I didn't think that he'd be available to play in this one. But we do have now the updated injury report, and the guy that isn't playing is Dorian Finney-Smith. He is out. Dennis Smith is out with a hip problem. He has now missed... Um, Smith has played four minutes in the last eight games, and now he's going to be missing his ninth. But let's just say that Smith's done for the year. But Cam Johnson has been upgraded to probable. Johnson has now played one out of his last four, including sitting the last two against the Kings and the Pistons on the back-to-back, so I'm not really sure what the plan is there. But Cam Johnson's going to return, and Nick Claxton missed the game, and he'd been on a couple of injury reports, and we thought there'd be a game off coming for Claxo. He sat on Sunday, but he is probable for Wednesday. So Claxton and Johnson are both probable. Dorian Finney-Smith is out, and Dennis Smith remains on the sidelines. So that's where we're at with the injuries there, but then you've got the other 14 teams where, honestly, we just... We don't really know which direction they're going to go and what can change and what can happen. So there are going to be some weird things that go on. What I do want to talk about in these eight games, I probably should go through and tell you who the actual eight games are. There's Memphis and Cleveland. What I've got on the screen for those watching on YouTube, it says rest risks. So teams that we need to pay attention to that have the potential to just drop a guy out of the rotation that we don't really know about. The first game is Memphis and Cleveland. We just talk Cleveland. Now, I'm not going to include Memphis on this list because... I just don't think any of these guys are playing. The guy that will sit for Memphis, and it's not a risk, we know this, it'll be Brandon Clark. He will not play on Wednesday after he plays on Tuesday. But everybody else, the main guys, 
Desmond Bain, like injury return, worthless, useless rest scenario. I don't know what the point of him coming back was. Like I, He won't play, I don't think. Jaron Jackson won't play. Um, Zaire Williams, Marcus Smart, Vince Williams, none of these guys will play. I think you'll run into the scenario where Jake LaRavia and Lamar Stevens probably do play. Luke Kennard, I don't think plays. John Conchar, I don't think plays, but who knows with Memphis. They are just a complete joke at the moment. And they have been for months and months and months in terms of their injury reporting and the way they're handling things. And yesterday for Memphis, I put on the cover image, the chairman, Malginia Pereira. I went, all right, this guy's playing well. They're giving him 30 minutes a night. So you know what happens today? His 10-day expires and they don't sign him. So he's done. He's not playing. So if you're watching this before the game's on Tuesday, Malginia Pereira does not play for the Grizzlies anymore. They signed White Stripes legend Jack White instead. So, yeah. So they're, they're back-end guys and the, <laughs> unbelievably, a bloke by the name of Timmy Allen, fakest name ever, not an NBA player, Timmy Allen, Xavier Simpson there, eh? and Jack White. What, what, this is, yeah, this is why, again, why I said I don't think Bain's coming back and being impactful, because this is the garbage that we're getting trotted out. So you're going to have Jack White, Tim Allen, Xavier Simpson, maybe Lamar Stevens, probably no Brandon Clark, you're going to have Jemison, Pippen, Goodwin, LaRavia, GG Jackson, but what if this is the game that they decide that Jackson, or sorry, Goodwin and Jemison sit out for their two-way stuff? And I'm not even sure that they have one game they have to sit out anymore. I honestly don't know where it sits. So yeah. They're not even including my rest risk because there's not even a rest scenario. I do have Toronto and Brooklyn as rest risks. I had the italicized teams there are the ones I'm a little bit worried about. With Brooklyn, like I said, because I just didn't know those statuses, but we do know now. With Toronto, we know Quickly is out on Tuesday. I expect that Barrett and Olenek will be out on Wednesday. I also think that Bruce Brown will rest on Wednesday. You've got the Spurs and the Thunder. I don't actually think there's going to be much in terms of resting for the Spurs. I think Jones, I think uh, Victor Wembanyama play. And we already know that Keldon, Vassell, and Sohan are going to be out. So I don't really think there's going to be a rest issue with the Spurs, but there could be. But there also there could be a rest issue with the Thunder. Those guys, well, not those guys. Well, Shea is returning, and the Bronco might return on Tuesday. But up against the Spurs, with Shea dealing with his hip problem, does he play? If Jalen Williams plays Tuesday, does he play Wednesday? That is a risk pressure point. Orlando and Milwaukee, I've got that as a rest risk. Now, both of these teams do want to keep winning because they are literally in a battle for the two seed. But Giannis's hamstring is not right. He is probable for Tuesday's game against Boston. But what if he sits on Wednesday? More importantly, like Chris Middleton's definitely sitting, yeah? Like Middleton's going to sit on Wednesday. And then for Orlando, both John Isaac and Mark Fultz are available for Tuesday. So they're not going to play on Wednesday, I would guess. I don't think they would change that idea around. And Gary Harris could rest as well. And then Franz Wagner is out on Tuesday, so I don't know his status. So Orlando could be all over the place as well. Minnesota and Denver. Carl Anthony Towns is back in practice, full contact, which to me, he's actually insane. The man's big. He's had multiple knee problems recently. He had meniscus surgery, and it's four and a half weeks since he had surgery. That's crazy to me. What are you doing? I honestly worry that A, he's just going to look bad or B, that he re-injures himself. That is, maybe maybe he's fine. Maybe my major worry is that that is career limiting. Coming back too early from meniscus is, is just, I don't know, feels irresponsible, but I don't know. But I don't think there's going to be any rest, rest issues with Minnesota. For Denver, there might be. I don't understand Denver's plan. What are they doing? They have the chance to get the number one seed and they play the Jazz on Tuesday and Aaron Gordon's out on Tuesday, but... Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Nikola Jokic, Contavious Caldwell Pope are all probable. Murray's coming back off this long absence. He played 21 minutes on Saturday, and you're going to play him on Tuesday? And then what? Sit him on Wednesday? Coming off a back-to-back? He's not playing both games. There's no way. So why would he play Tuesday? None of that makes sense. I would guess that like, if, they, if all these guys were listed questionable for Denver on Tuesday, I would think they just wouldn't play. But they're all probable. So that would mean, I guess, Murray sits on Wednesday? Like, I don't know. That makes zero sense to me. And the last one is Phoenix and the Clippers. I say that I don't think Phoenix is at really much rest or risk for a rest here, but I do think that the Clippers are. Kawhi is out on Tuesday, and then when the first injury report came out for the Clippers, James Harden wasn't on it. And then they corrected course and they put him back onto the injury report after Ty Lue told us that on Sunday, Harden only played 26 minutes because of a foot issue. 
then he looked like he'd escaped the problem, but now he's on for Tuesday. So I would guess that there is a massive chance that Harden does not play on on either, on either one of these two games, Tuesday or Wednesday, and Kawhi could very easily... Well, he's already sitting Tuesday. He could also sit Wednesday against the same team. That's possible as well. They also play on Friday against the Jazz, and I would say there is zero chance that Harden and Kawhi play on Friday. Zero. But a lot of the, if, if I was running the teams, every single team, and I had like you know all 30 control on NBA 2K... There is no chance that Harden and Kawhi, for me, would play on that game on Friday. There is none. But like I said, like with the way Denver's handling this Murray thing, there is zero chance he would play today against the Jazz. But apparently he is. And then he's going to sit against Minnesota or he's going to play through it. I don't know. But I do think the Clippers are at risk here of having either one of Kawhi or Harden out on Wednesday or both of them out on Wednesday. So that's my rest risks. I don't think there's much of a risk in the Charlotte-Atlanta game. I guess Charlotte could throw those random wrist injury tags onto Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller, but they've played through back-to-backs. Atlanta, Trey Young could be returning at some point this week, but I don't think Jalen Johnson or Bogdanovich or any of these guys are likely to sit, so no real rest risk there. And then Dallas and Miami. Now, I do believe that Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving are going to sit games at some point, but they, they play in Miami, and it is, I guess, somewhat important for them to get that win because their next game after that, after Tuesday... Um, they play the Pistons on Friday. And again, it's a back-to-back. So I would have thought you would have sat one of Kyrie or Luca against Charlotte on Tuesday. That would have made sense to me, but they're both playing. So I guess they both play against Miami. And then they possibly sit against the Pistons in the second last game of the day. But that doesn't make a lot of sense either. But in terms of where we're looking, it is a, a game where I'm not sure there's going to be any rest there. And then for Miami, same. Like I think Butler will play and Bam will play. Um, and all those guys. But we do know that Duncan Robinson is going to be out. So whew, there you go. There are my rest risks scenarios. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time now, by the way, is an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer it gets to first pitch. They've got the killer last minute deals. You've got your all-in pricing. You've used from your seat as well. Plus the lowest price guarantee, all of these different options and different guarantees is what makes Game Time able to take the guesswork out of buying those major league baseball tickets. I hate saying MLB, it doesn't sound right, but yeah, MLB. You, you can go into the app, you can see all the different things, you look at your location, um, they'll give you options of things that, that uh, are popping up in your local area. They've got the zone deals where you just pick an area that you want to sit and they just choose the best price seat for you. It's easier to find and buy your MLB tickets and for whatever kind of event is in your area as well. The last minute deals also, 60% off buying last minute tickets for all sports, comedy, concerts, uh, theater, whatever it is. The last minute deals, the prices drop and that's where you can really take advantage. So take uh, the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code Locked On NBA. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create the account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download the Game Time app, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so that was a lot of, I don't know, talking, I guess, about things that may or may not happen. Let's go in now and have a look at some streaming options. I think that would be probably the the best way to go about this. Um, And we'll start with some Yahoo points options. Now, I changed a little bit about the way that I'm displaying this. Not really, but a full caps player is a guy that is um, available in 40 plus percent of leagues. A just regular font player is 50% available. And an italicized player is 70% available. So it tends to cover shallow formats, Standard formats, deeper formats, I hope. I believe, now you, the first name on this list is a man that I am just a huge fan of everything that he does and the way he goes about it, and that's Russell Westbrook. But I say that in jest because I actually, I actually do like Russ as a person, but I just some of the stuff about the way he plays has really frustrated me, and I've been very clear on that. But I believe that we are going to have one of Kawhi and Harden, maybe both, out on Wednesday. And if Harden is out, it won't be Bones Highland that starts. It will be Russell Westbrook. So yeah, he's an excellent stream who's over 40% available now. It took us a while to get here to Westbrook to being down to under 60, which is again crazy that it took this long. But here we are. So yeah, he's there. I've got Sandro Mamakilishvili as number two. With no Calden, he should start. Now you'll get a better idea of this on Tuesday, but I really like him there. 
Grant Williams starting over Nick Richards. Like it. Jordan Goodwin. Again, you can always get the dreaded G League um, DNP after we got tosined by the Pistons over the weekend as well. This could happen to Jordy. You got Cole Anthony there, working under my assumption that both Isaac, but more importantly, Fultz is out. And then you got Scott Pippen, who doesn't have any G League two way restrictions. He can play every game rest of the way. Um, the way that Pippen get impacted is if they decide to uncork uh, Des Bain, uncork Canard, uncork Concha, and bring all those guys back. I've got more than one page of Yahoo point streamers because we can go to Devontae Graham here, who's getting a lot of minutes. This is where we're at in the season. Devontae Graham is playing 30 minutes a night. And there are going to be a lot of you who are watching this go, who does that bloke even play for? San Antonio. Yeah. Um, Vasa Misic, still just 30% rostered. I've got DeAndre Hunter, who's under 60%. Trey Mann, still under 30 and then two guys that are sitting there that just might be available, Winner Soldier Max Struess and Jalen Suggs. Both available in over 40% of leagues who do profile pretty well. And then a third page of Yahoo point streamers, we go to Zach Collins. Can be iffy, but with Calden out, maybe his minutes push up. I've got Jake Laravia. I just don't know whether Jake is going to play or not. I, I don't know. No idea. He's doubtful for Tuesday. I think he plays, but I don't know. I'm also expecting that Jaron doesn't play so Trey Jemison gets another start, and that puts him on that list after LaRavia. I've got Gigi Jackson there because his minutes are relatively secure. Now his usage is a little bit all over the shop. He hasn't really blossomed the way that, that some of us may have hoped. I've got Bubble Champagne there, who's been excellent, probably better in category leagues than points, but he's there. And then Contavious Caldwell-Pope is um, not, again, hasn't been a must roster points league guy all season. But there is a chance for him to put up some pretty good numbers uh, for Yahoo points leagues. We'll do the same thing on ESPN Points Leagues, the same capitalization, italicization, italici italicization? That sounds so wrong. But anyway, you know what I mean. That's the same uh, applicable numbers, except I'm not using ESPN's roster percentage numbers because they're fake, they're garbage, they don't pertain to anything. Russell Westbrook's the top of my list there, followed by Grant Williams, Sandra Mamakilishvili for the deeper guys, Geordie Goodwin, Cole Anthony, and Scott Pippen. I believe that's the top six guys that we had on the Yahoo Point side of things as well. Then we go to Vasa Misic, we go to Jalen Suggs, Devontae Graham, Max Struess, DeAndre Hunter, and Trey Mann. All of these names appeared for the Yahoo side as well. Just the ordering of them because of the different format of the point scoring is slightly different here for ESPN. And then the third list of ESPN Points League streamers, we do go to Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Trey Jemison, Zach Collins, Julian Champagny, Jake LaRavia, and G.G. Jackson. Don't be surprised if you see a Timmy Allen pop up as being a good option or um, old mate Jack White coming in there with his Seven Nation Army and putting up numbers because that Grizzlies team continues to be a complete embarrassment. Also, by the way, the Blazers edged us about Shaden Sharp returning. And finally, they took their hand off the stick, and he's not going to be playing the rest of the season, Shaden Sharp. They still won't tell us that Jeremy Grant is done, or that Malcolm Brogdon is done, or that Anthony Simons is done, or Matisse Leibel is done. I am telling you they are done, but they won't tell us they're done because they are holding these trade secrets so tight to their chest. And I also, again, I will continue to say this, are they keeping this stuff so ambiguous because of the, the, the paper tiger that is the player participation policy? Because if they come out and say these guys are all out, then this is allegedly running a foul. So they just keep saying, well, maybe, maybe he's, he's out. Like, again, this thing solved nothing. Nothing. But all it does, I believe, is cause us actually more confusion, confusion about what these teams are doing. So there you go. Bet you didn't know I was going to complain about that. Yeah, you did, because that's what I complained about. Let's talk about... Ooh, actually, we'll get into category leagues in a sec. But today's episode is also brought to you by Better Help. Yes, getting things off your chest. That's not all the what therapy is about, right? Therapy is about many different things, but that can be one of them because you might be in your life, you're with your partner, your kids, your work colleagues, and there are certain things you can't tell them. You can't say, man, I have been absolutely edged about Shade and Sharp for all of this time, and I just hate the Blazers because they're going to go, are you all right? I, what are you telling me for? I don't need to hear about edging shade and sharp. Like that's not important to me. But you still need to get it out, right? You can spew it in the YouTube comments, but talking to someone who's unbiased in your life can be really good. And it can help you be able to focus on other things in your life without that sort of stress building up, which might be not needed. Like you might not need that stress. No one needs the stress, but it's not like important, but it happens. Even if you, I can tell you a million times, hey, your fantasy team is not important. Your favorite NBA team losing a key game is not important. But me telling you that, that doesn't matter. 
because it still impacts you. So you've got to deal with it. You've got to process it to get through to other things that become more important in your life. Therapy can be different for everybody. Nearly all of us, in fact, literally every single one of us, have something that's a bigger problem, unless you're actually, I guess, work for the organization, a bigger problem than their favorite sports team losing a game or underperforming or lying to them through injury reports, whatever it is. So if you think about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Some might say I really do have a gift of um, talking for 20 minutes without actually saying anything in this show. So I don't know how we got here, but we got here. And I guess the one thing I can say is I just hope you're marginally informed and marginally entertained. Let's talk category leagues. Who can we stream in for the points category for Wednesday? Understanding that a million different things can change in that time. Same thing here. Gigi Jackson, really like his points ability. DeAndre Hunter. Russell Westbrook for the shallower formats. Going to score quite a bit, I think. This working assumption for Westbrook is that Harden sits one of these two games and Kawhi could be out as well. But Kawhi and Harden both might sit Tuesday. They both might play Wednesday and Westbrook is basically close enough to useless. Devontae Graham, I think is a pretty good points option for us. Um, Grant Williams is a pretty good points option. Cole Anthony, with the expectation that Fultz is out, is a good points option. We're going to do 12 different guys for each category. So the next six in points leagues, we do... Uh, it's not for points leagues, for the points category. Sandro Mamakelishvili, Vas Misic, Jake LaRavia, Jalen Suggs. I do have the prestige penis grade A dick here. Now, dick is out on Tuesday, but Toronto could very easily slide dick back in on Wednesday. Quickly is also out on Tuesday. So like you could get quickly and dick back on Wednesday, but you'll have Barrett, I would guess, and a Linux sitting out. Or that dick might be completely messed up and he's out both of these games. Like there is a problem with his groin that does necessitate them not showing us dick in that game. If dick is out there, I'm happy to get dick in to my lineup. So yeah, I do think grade A is worth a look for points. And then you've got Malaka Branham in San Antonio, expecting that those guys all remain out. Well, actually, the only one there is Keldon because everyone else has already officially been ruled out. But I don't think that Keldon Johnson's going to play. For threes, Devontae Graham. Yes, I, I, again, I cannot believe I'm talking about this bloke, but I am. Devontae Graham. Um, Leahy Beasley. Davis Bertans. The man does nothing but hit threes. Gigi Jackson. The winner soldier, Max Struess. And Jalen Suggsy Suggs. All options for multiple threes in many of these, Bertans, Beasley, maybe Graham, maybe Struess, have the ability to go five, six, seven threes deep. The next page of threes, guys, Grant Williams. Like, that's more of a floor value because he's playing 38 minutes. Same with DeAndre Hunter playing 35 minutes. They're never going to pop off for eight threes, most likely, but there's enough floor value there. Bubble Champagne, you'll get your two or three. You've got Dick, who can easily drop in five. You've got Timmy Hardaway, who can actually pop off. And if we get a scenario where Kyrie or Lucas sits, and I don't think they will, but if they do, then Hardaway could do a lot more than you throw Jaden Hardy into that mix too. And then Storm and Norman Powell can get you 14 points, five threes. That doesn't work. The maths don't work on that. But let's say 14 points, four threes. Maybe that's more likely what Powell can do in that scenario. Let's look at some big man numbers. Let's go to some rebound stats. And again, there are a lot of assumptions that have to be baked into this because the number one rebound guy that I've got here is Trey Jemison. But A, what if Jemison doesn't play and he gets G-leagued? What if Jaron returns? But I'm expecting that Brandon Clark is out here and I'm expecting that Aldama is out and maybe Stevens is out and maybe and Jaron is out, but I don't know. I've got Bruno Fernando there as a rebound stream. I don't expect to see a Nyeka Okongwu here. I've got Zach Collins and Grant Williams as pretty stable rebound sources. Russell Westbrook, again, working under the assumption that Harden will sit. Um, and Nick Richards, even though he comes off the bench, he can still get six or seven of those in 18 to 20 minutes. If we look at um, some other rebound options, Jordan Goodwin has been rebounding the ball really well. Again, same risks. Does he play? I don't know. Does anybody else play? I don't know. But Goodwin can get a lot of rebounds. Cole Anthony's a solid enough rebounder with a solid enough floor, but lower upside there in terms of rebounds. I've got Noah Clowney there, who I just want to see them give 30 minutes to every night. The absence of Dorian Finney-Smith does help, but the return of Claxton hurts, but I still think there's value in him. I've got Christian Brown. Yes, that's 
doesn't seem like a great rebound guy, but he's available like everywhere. There's a chance that Murray sits. That means 27, 28 minutes for Brown. But also, what if Murray plays? Then Brown doesn't do much. But you could also get Gordon out again or Porter sits or whatever. And then Brown and Watson step up. I've got Jordan Wara, who got DMP'd, then played like 10 minutes. But if we do have Barrett out, if we do have uh, Olenek out, maybe he's an option. And then Caleb Martin can get close to 30 minutes, get you six rebounds or so. He's more of a safer floor play than a high upside guy. If we're going to talk blocks, we do have to go back to Trey Jemison. And the second name on that list is just incredibly risky. It's Mamadou Gay. That's the Toronto Gay, not the Atlanta Gay. Remember that. Now, I don't know if he's available because I haven't checked ESPN, but Mamadou Gay was not available to add on ESPN. I'm going to tell you now that like Timmy Allen's not going to be available for you to add over there as well. Pretty confident. So in fact, I don't even think he's going to be available on Yahoo. And I'm going to do just a quick checkup because again, it is fair enough for me to be fair. Does Fantrax have Timmy Allen as an option to add? There's our big question. Timmy Allen is available. There you go. Tim Allen, available, tool-time legend, ready to go on fan tracks. They're pretty quick with it. Um, yeah, so Mamadou Gay, that's me working under the assumption that Kelly Olenek is out resting. Last time they started Malik Williams in one of the most worst decisions and starts that I've ever seen, and they should give the option to Gay. But I don't know whether Gay gets that opportunity or not, but I think he could. I've got Peyton Watson there. Now, there are plenty of opportunities for Watson to get big blocks. Gordon could sit again. Porter could sit. Even in 20 minutes, Peyton could get two of them. I've got Bruno Fernando there as a blocks guy. Nick Richards as a blocks guy. Their upsides are relatively limited, but one to two blocks in 18 to 20 minutes is definitely possible. And then the same goes for Pokyshevsky, who can play 20, 21 minutes and get a couple of blocks in that scenario. When you want to get real desperate, though, we go to the next six names on the blocks list. Zach Collins, now if he pushes up to 26, 27, maybe he gets more. Julian Champagne is playing 37 a night, and he's pulling in one to two blocks a night. The upside is low, but as a forward, there is great block ability there. Noah Clowney's a pretty good blocks guy. Lamar Stevens, if he's available and plays, maybe gets you some blocks, but these guys are just available like everywhere. Uh, Drew Eubanks, now Yusuf Nurkic is questionable on Tuesday, so if Nurkic has to sit one of the games, and we're talking more specifically Wednesday here, then Eubanks would probably play 25 minutes. Now, he's been a gigantic disappointment this season. Also, one of those ones, I've talked a lot about Terry Rogier. I've talked a lot about Kelly Oubre putting up big numbers on Charlotte last season and looking like, yeah, big man, king in the castle. And then they go to better teams and they struggle. Now, Oubre's played much better of late. Yes, with everybody out, but he's played much better of late in that scenario. But Eubanks was a guy who was like a silly season legend in Portland for the last couple of years. And go, well, he's looking really good. Maybe that's a great signing by Phoenix. He goes to a good team. He looks terrible. Like he's been trash. So maybe we have to consider these guys who step up in Portland. Maybe it's just bad. Same with like, Trenton Watford was great. Didn't do anything in Brooklyn. Now they've turned trash and these guys are out and he's starting to show some stuff. But if they ever find themselves in a situation on a better team, I'm having some very, very big doubts about that stuff ever coming good. So yeah, Drew Eubanks is an option for blocks. And then again, when you're talking about these guys like a Champagne. Oshay Abaj is in the mix. Now, I think Abaj is bad. I don't think he's a starting caliber player. I don't think he's a rotation caliber player. But that honestly does not matter here on April the 10th. Because Abaj is probably going to start, although he could sit because it's a back-to-back. And he's got the ability to get one to two blocks as a forward eligible player. The other big man numbers we look at are, or is, the field goal percentage category. Um, A lot of these are going to be lower volume guys, but just getting like a three of three, a four of five, five of six, four of six, that sort of stuff can still help. So we've got Nick Richards, Bruno Fernando, Trey Jemison, guys who are going to have a role and we feel good about their efficiency. Trenton Watford, the Dorian Finney-Smith one uh, being out does help him somewhat, but the minutes just could be all over the place. That's possible too. I've got Mo Wagner there, who is a very high efficiency and a decent usage player too. And then Drew Eubanks is an interesting field goal percentage player. Uh, on that list in the next six field goal percentage, guys. Mason Plumley always iffy. I don't know whether the Plum Dog plays because they've sort of moved him and Tice in and out. But Tice is dealing with an injury, so there's a little bit of there for Plumley. You've got his teammate Terrence Mann, who's a high field goal percentage option. Dayron Sharp, 20 minutes, 8 minutes, 0 minutes. I don't know. But if you get some playing time, we're in. I expect that Muxy Kleber sits one of the two games. At the moment, Kleber is questionable on Tuesday, so therefore I've put him as a zero on Wednesday. And if Kleber is a zero on Wednesday, that means we have to get more Dwight Powell in there. Now, Powell could play 10 minutes anyway, but they sort of phased him out last game to go with more Washington, Gafford, and Kleber. 
But if Kleber sits Tuesday and plays Wednesday, then Powell might not play at all. But if he does, we look at it. There's Noah Clowney as a field goal percentage guy. And then there is, of course, the one and only Bol Bol. Let's look at assists. Let's transition to guard stats for Wednesday. Westbrook, again, the assumption here is that Kawhi and or Harden are out. If they both play, Westbrook pushes back in the list. Next, we go to Vas Misic, Scott Pippen, Trey Mann, Jordan Goodwin, Max Struess. Every single one of those guys has at least six assist value. With some of them, Westbrook, Misic, Pippen, 10 assist upside. And that is just not a likely thing that you find on the wire, really at many points during the season. But now, four, five days left, we're seeing it pop up. The next six assist options, Devontae Graham. Yeah, he's going to get minutes. He's not a big assist guy. Reggie Jackson is more because I think Jamal Murray sits, but I don't know. Kobe Bufkin, now we're talking like, yeah, he's got 17 minutes. He might get three or four assists, but maybe that's all you need. I don't think the upside for him is high. And then Kyle Anderson, probably five to six assists here also, although he's only playing 18, 19 minutes now. Dante Exum's value could really rise if we do have Kyrie or Lucas sit, but otherwise he's got an okay role to get three or four assists. And then same with Cole Anthony to get four or five or three or four or whatever in that role with Markel Fultz likely out. If we stay with guard stats, we go to steals. Westbrook and Caldwell Pope available in shallow leagues, so you can look at them in that spot. You've got Trey Mann, Scott Pippen, and Jordan Goodwin as pretty good steals guys that are widely available. And then Jalen Suggs, another guy who's more of a shallow league target, but a very good steals option for us here. Uh, if we go to the next six steals guy, Max Struess, not noted as a big steals guy, but we know there are big minute role coming for him, so we're interested there. Jake LaRavia, maybe. Gary Harris, we don't know whether he plays in the back-to-back or not, but otherwise we'll look at that. Bubble Champagne, that's the San Antonio one. Lou Dort, yep, hard to trust him, but Lou Dort's there. And then Kaysen Wallace, his teammate, but there could be changes there. Shea may sit, uh, Jalen Williams might be out, so bigger minutes could be coming there for Kaysen. And lastly, we go to free throw percentage. KCP is the number one guy we want to look at here. Uh, followed by DeAndre Hunter, but understand they're only shallow league available players. Then it gets down to a Davis Bertans, a Tim Hardaway, the Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari, followed by the Kansas cock, Grady Dick, both good free throw percentage players. And then we go to the last list here. Malaka Branham is usually a pretty good free throw guy. He's going to have minutes. He's going to have opportunities. So we like that. Amir Coffey, 23, 24 minutes, good free throw shooter, could bump even higher. Jordan Wara, eh, I don't know. Terrence Mann, pretty good stuff there from him. Norman Powell, good free throw shooter. And Reggie Jackson, also a good free throw shooter. I know that I've gone long, but I'm just going to give two more seconds to talk about someone because someone left a comment on the show yesterday and said, man, I wish Josh would just guess instead of saying, I don't know. And I try to make a habit of not doing that for a very specific reason. What is the point of me? Like when you say, because it was in reference to me talking about guys sitting for like some of these teams. Like when I said, like, I don't know whether Jaron Jackson is going to be available. Like I, I think he won't be, but I don't know. So I, I don't see what the purpose of me, I'd rather tell you my genuine feelings. So people often say to me, hey, hey, honestly, what do you think? Yeah, like I, I, everything I tell you is my honest feelings. But I'm not, I'm not going to come out here and pretend to know things that I don't because I guess you might as well guess. I can give you all the information, all of the numbers that might back it up or trends or whatever. But I don't, there, there are things that I don't know. And to me, a better way of doing things, like admitting that when you don't know something, I think is probably way better. But again, sometimes people want someone to blame something on if they make a guess and it's wrong. I, I understand that part of it as well. But I'm never going to come out here and just be 100% on making like calls on stuff because that's just not really, I, I shouldn't have to make a definitive call on somebody every single moment because that's realistically not how anything in life works or in particular in fantasy sports. So if there's something I don't know, like Jamal Murray, I I think that Jamal Murray sits on Wednesday, but honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know what their plan is. Nothing would suggest to me that I should know what their plan is. So if you're going to come to me and go, do you think that Luka Doncic sits out a game this week and which game? I don't know. I honestly don't know. So I could give you best ideas or understanding of how this stuff works, but I try to be more like, um, try to be more intentional about the things that I do know or don't know or where things lean, but there are going to be plenty of things that, that I don't know. And that I think is okay. Maybe you disagree with that. 
Again, that's also okay. And that is a very weird way to end the show. But I'm a very weird bloke. So go ahead and hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, ring the bell, and leave your comments down below. I know there's not many of you watching, especially not right now. But if any of you guys are heading to Vegas for Summer League this year, do it. Come see me. I'll be out there for the first three or four days of Vegas Summer League as well and would love to see you guys out there. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.